I am Dr. Lakshmi Satish, practicing ENT surgeon at Skin Cosmetic and ENT Care Center and also at Sagar Hospitals, Jainagar. Allergic rhinitis is not so common in infants. However, a small infant can have atopic dermatitis or allergic bronchitis. Slightly older children from 2 to 15 years of age group can suffer from allergic rhinitis. So we need to treat according to the age group and according to the severity of the disease. First we tell about the environmental control. We have to advise the parents to keep the surroundings very clean, dust free and to keep the pets outdoors. It's better if the child avoids contact with the pets. Soft toys which are stuffed and carpets and rugs attract dust mite. So the parents have to remove the soft toys or wash them repeatedly and vacuum clean the house, change the bed sheets, bed linen frequently. Coming to the medications, second generation antihistamine syrups or tablets according to the body weight of the child needs to be prescribed. Drugs like cetrazine, levocetrazine, loratidine or fexofenadine can be given to control the symptoms of allergic rhinitis. Sometimes for persistent moderate allergic rhinitis we need to add topical steroids like fluticosone furoate or fluticosone propionate or mometazone furoate as an add-on therapy. Topical steroid sprays are quite safe and not harmful whenever absolutely indicated. They are indicated however for persistent perineal allergic rhinitis symptoms. Some of the add-on therapies include disodium chromoglycate or chromol which can be given as a eye drops to control the symptoms of allergic conjunctivitis which coexists along with allergic rhinitis. Drug like uh, Montelukast which is a leukotriene modifying agent is helpful in persistent allergic rhinitis symptoms along with allergic bronchitis symptoms. Saline nasal douches or saline nasal sprays helping washing out the allergy load and they are safe and can be used regularly in children to avoid the allergen load into the nasal cavity. The last resort would be to do some surgical intervention such as submucous diathermy or uh, methods to reduce the size and sensitivity of the trigger zone in the inferior turbinates. Allergic rhinitis is a condition seen very commonly in ENT practice. Roughly one in four or five patients walk into the clinic with allergy symptoms. They complain of recurrent bouts of sneezing, watery nasal discharge, itching of the eyes, itching of the nose and constant irritation in the ears, redness of the eyes and pale watery discharge coming out of the nose. They can also complain of soreness in the throat and itching at the back of the palate and ear irritation. Coming to the signs of allergic rhinitis, we see swollen inferior turbinates pale mucous membrane of the nasal cavity, there can be clear watery nasal discharge, the turbinates can be either very pale or slightly purplish and really swollen occupying the whole of the nasal cavity. They can have conjunctival redness and swollen eyelids, there can be excoriation of the skin around the vestibule of the nose because of constant rubbing and irritation. They can also have a dull lusterless tympanic membrane on otoscopy. They can have associated secretory otitis media because of prolonged allergic rhinitis. We may see allergic salute. The child can keep on brushing the nose with the palms uh, resulting in creases on the dorsum of the nose. What we call it as an allergic salute. As a sequelae of prolonged nasal allergy, there can be polyps in the nasal cavity, either an anthrocoinal polyp or multiple small ethmoidal polyps like a bunch of grapes as a sequelae of prolonged allergic rhinitis.